So in the mid to late 70s, you guys decided to, uh, you didn't go with the, you know, I don't know what you call it, the fire red or the fluorescent red or whatever. You guys kind of adopted that that petty design. What was what was uh, behind that? Well, you know, it's really pretty, it, it's all boils down to economics. Um, the, the, really the, the, the blue on the car of daddy's was forward blue. And if he bought a car from the Petties, it was much easier to cover up the blue with a <laughs> with a forward blue. Mm -hmm. And then the red of Daddy's was a '65 Dodge, bright red. Those those were his his colors. You hear and, that, model builders? You're gonna ask, and now you know when you paint your models yeah. <laughs> through Salvinos or whatever. <laughs> so anyway, it uh, it was just easier to to cover up the paint. You know, you, it was already uh, outlined there, so you taped it off, painted it, and went on. And that's that's it. It was not hook or crook. It was just business. Now, if, as a as a when I started out in '74, my first race was Michigan in August of '74. So I devoured racing from then. But so to me, you guys were a household name. Mm -hmm. But I guess correct me if I'm wrong. But I think that your guys kind of coming out party to the the rest of the world because you know '79 the Daytona 500. I mean, it opened doors to. I mean, we'd never, we'd, you know, never seen. Well, now the eyes are on the world to the next big super speedway, Talladega, in May of 79. They have, you know, what, 78 car wreck or whatever. You guys go out, you, I believe you qualified third and finished fourth or qualified fourth, finished third. I, I believe that's where, where you guys coming out party was and made you guys household names because you guys ran with them. I mean, you guys were in the hunt to win that race in a magnum, no less. Yeah. You know, things sort of fell into place. The problem, and I'm going to say this, and it's just, it, we were not prepared to take advantage of it. That's the ugly truth. We still operate now the garage by then, or did you, you have you, a shop by then, or? A gas station. Wow. You got to remember that was 79. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or 80, whatever year it was. It was, it was, it was, you know. We pumped gas during the day and worked on the car at night, period. So, but anyway, that that's the ugly truth. It just, you know, the car was there, the the driver was there, just didn't have any money. So, and that was, that was it. And it seemed to, you know, and I don't, I don't know if that, I know you guys were, you know, obviously looking for money. I mean, you'd see, you know, Reed's trailer and then, you know, or, or who are praying Chrysler or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, and you guys would pick stuff up as you go. Did that help? Did that kind of like, you know, say, Hey, maybe we, you know, we are running up front now and, you know, an 80, 82 was like a, I, I believe was a banner year for you guys. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, you had that, you know, you know, we talked about the Imperial and the Cordoba, you know, later, uh, but I mean, you guys were, I believe, sixth in points, eight in points. You were sixth at Michigan, sixth. I believe, in the August race. I and mean, we, you guys were there yeah. all season, not just a couple right You guys were there all season. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, it was, um, it, if I don't have my wires crossed, he had, uh, I think, panel knitting was there. Panel and, knitting, yeah. Was that the, and, and they were at, they were, long time. Our biggest partner, local partner. And, um, it just, it was a good year, you know, the, the, um, like I said earlier, you know, talked about testing at Daytona in 80, and then went on into 81, and with the new car, and uh, the short wheelbase car, and, and basically, at that time, we had a lot of new parks, parts at that time that was left over from the Petties. And the effort that Junior had put in for the Murata in that test at Daytona. So, it, you know, and it took a while for all that stuff to sort of, our, our stuff that we were using, let's say in 1981, to sort of sift through it and figure out the new car, the short wheelbase car. And then now all this other, all these other parts were starting to become, 
useful for us. And uh, it was just, uh, it was a, uh, let me say it, it, it was good for us. The problem is we couldn't sustain. Involved in the spin during the, uh, the big caution flag, if you look at Buddy Arrington coming into the pitch, it's Richard Petty. I know we got fans are, I mean, you guys were the Chrysler car and that was it. And I, you know, and I, I saw the loyalty, but I mean, you guys had to say, you know what, this ain't working. Yeah. It, you know, and I would, I would have been um, 28, 29 at the time. You know, some of the stuff, I'm not sure what he was thinking, but parts were getting hard. To, I mean, it was just. Parts were getting hard to find, but you know, probably the biggest factor is technology was moving forward. Rules were changing that that uh, you needed manufacturer support, and that manufacturer was gone. Yeah, totally right. Yeah, I mean, so that, and they had plus they had no money, but, <laughs> so yeah, there was nothing you could do there. There was nothing right. you could do. I mean, you, you needed, and, and then if you go back and look at the, and I guess probably the, you know, probably the the biggest factor of switching to Ford was that if you looked at the bodies that Dodge had to offer at that time, it was, it just didn't work. I know a lot of ARCA guys were trying to get the LeBaron started, you know, Brad yeah. Smith, Morris, Morris Randall, and then, you know, Jerry Churchill, you know, uh, uh, Jerry Lawrence, you know, Ron yeah. Otto driving, Roy Payne. Um, I mean, that was late, you know, late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. you guys were kind of not, you know, running by then. But uh, could you see something like that maybe coming? Because Mopar was now footing the bill. Chrysler wasn't. Mopar was footing the bill. Yeah. Well, Did you... I, I'll tell you what I saw. I saw absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, my, a good friend of mine, Norman Degree, had something going on in 1990, something like that. And I remember going to his shop, and he wouldn't let me in. Now, this is my good friend. We grew up together. Wow. Now, I can't right. let you in. I'm working on top secret. Oh, boy. You know, <laughs> I guess we, so. <laughs> we were the same age. And then I got to Daytona. Um, I guess it would have been February of 90, February of 91. And Churchill's car was sitting there. I didn't. I had no idea. And there it sat somewhere close to Pitt Road on display. And just so happened... There was a gentleman there by the name of Larry Henry who I knew back from the 70s with direct connection, Mopar. Who just passed away, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And and I run into him and we, 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 we shot the breeze for a while and then he said, you know, would you guys have any, do you have any engines left over from what your dad used? And I said, no, no, we can build them, but we don't have anything left over. And then he told me a little bit of history of um, what, all, what all had gone on and their goals were to be there at the ARCA race in 1991 and they didn't have an engine. That's a big problem. <laughs> so the car was on display and um, and I didn't know Jerry Hick Churchill and he said, well, let me see what I can put together and we'll get back to you, you know, after we're done here with the ARCA event and stuff. So anyway, Monday or Tuesday after Daytona, I get a phone call from Larry and said, hey, this is what we'd like to do and can you get an engine ready for Talladega, which would, would have been April, May, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I told him, yeah, and we, we started on three engines, I think. And we had we got one engine ready, and we went to Talladega and qualified third, I think. Right. <clears throat> I think. And then, and then they had a wreck in lap 20, and he was caught up in the middle of that. Right, right. So... Anyway, we had a, from an engine standpoint, we had a good start. Now I don't know if we would have finished, but we had a good start. And uh, um, you got and, the attention that they wanted. Yeah, yeah. It, it, they knew we were there. You know, that's all you can do in any sport. Is you know, it's just like boxing. You know, if, if one guy's all all beat up bad, and the other guy looks like he's ready to go to out to eat, well, it won't be good. But if everybody if everybody's beat up, it's like they knew we were there. So anyway, we went on and. Um, Continued building motors, and then in 92, I think, Keselowski come on board. Yeah. 
So you had Jerry and Keselowski and then a few others here and there. And, and it started, it started. Uh, now you didn't do uh, Jerry Lawrence's stuff. I believe he did no, his own he stuff. He did his own. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, it moved forward. And, and, you know, that was, I'm not so sure if you're aware, you know, I bought one of Keselowski's cars. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Okay. Well, I bought one of his Chrysler. It's here. Okay. I bought one of his Chrysler LeBarons that he raced from 93 to 95. Now, it's got history. That's it's where it went. The Winnebago on the... Yeah. Oh, it's here. It's here. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And um, it... Uh, and people don't realize it, but, you know, Churchill's effort and certainly Keselowski's effort is uh, the Archer Brothers and Trans Am. All I forgot about Kim Campbell. I forgot about him. And, you know, all this stuff was happening from 19... Really, 91, 92... All the way up till NASCAR, I mean, not NASCAR, but the Dodge made an announcement at the end of 2000, not 99, that they there. were going back to cut. Well, you know, all those all those efforts were steps. Now, yeah. I really don't think that it was planned that way. It just turned out to be. Want to see if it'll work. Yeah. I don't even think that. I, could, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that, that Dodge really acknowledged that Mopar was messing around in circle track racing at that time. Now, I think when the truck stuff started in 94, 95, they were starting to look. But as far as the stuff that was going on Trans Am and, and ARCA in the early 90s, I don't think they really was like, okay, this is, let them, you know, they got a marketing budget, let them use it. <laughs> Not spending our money. <laughs> yeah, right. so, and, and I think that's the way it worked out. 